Hey guys, hope you and your families are well. Many of you have probably read the Minervini books and your pages probably look something like this with a copious amount of notes all over it. So what am I gonna do in this video? I'm gonna show you 19 charts that are taken from the book where Minervini annotated entry point and or buy points. So I've marked them up myself. There are lots of variations of the volatility contraction pattern breakout. So it's kind of the classic VCP, but you're gonna see flags in this video. You're gonna see cup and handles across various timeframes as well, because it really is the VCP is the law of supply and demand forming that line of least resistance. There's a couple of key points per chart as we work our way through and some common characteristics that you're going to see as well. Before we jump on into it, Market Smith are the sponsor of this video. There's a discounted trial available in the comments below if you are interested. So let's jump on into it and let's go to our first chart. So the first chart here, this is more classic VCP and we'll have some variations that get a little bit more complex as we go. So primarily, what are you looking for? So I'll, I'll talk more in, term, in terms of the first one to give you an overview. What are you looking for in terms of a VCP? Well, you're looking for a stock that is in the context of a strong uptrend. How do you do that? Well, you can just visually see it in terms of the price. You can use moving averages as well. So on this chart here, you have the 10 EMA, which is the black line. You have the blue line, which is the 21 EMA. Purple line is the 50 SMA. Gray line is the 100 SMA. And just down here, because I've enlarged the chart, is also the 200 SMA. So you can see the stock is in the context of a very nice uptrend indeed. A couple of bounces off the 10 EMA, which means it's a very strong stock. This is Qualcomm back in the 1999 going into the 2000s. So what are you then looking for? Well, with your kind of classic VCP, you're looking for a base that ideally has a minimum base duration of four to six weeks, but you can see the bigger bases as you are going to see. In, uh, in the remainder of, of this video. And preferably you're looking for higher lows to form. So you can see here, you see these contractions, you have one contraction, two contraction, and three contraction. Commonly with a classic VCP, you'll see somewhere between three and six contractions. That is that is my own experience as, as well. And you'd also like to see volume drying up. So see how the volume here from left to right is drying up? <coughs> this black line here is the 30 bar moving average. So I use the 30 bar, whether that is on the weekly chart, the daily chart, and or the one hour chart as well because you're just looking at it for a relative a relative basis ideally you would also like to see price volatility as the name as the name it suggests volatility contraction pattern so you'd like to see volatility from left to right drying up <coughs> so structural high lows and then volatility drying up so that is the depth for the pullbacks but you can also be looking at the kind of range of the individual candlesticks and or bars if you're using bars and sets you'd just like to see everything tightening by the time we get to the end of these 1990 19 examples hopefully it'll make it'll make much more sense and then you can see here breaking out through the higher this base and on the breakout bar ideally you'd like to see see actually an increase of volatility so you'd like to see a widening of the price spread price on the day opening near the low closing <coughs> closing near the high and preferably a pop-up in volume better if it's above the the 30 bar average but you can see here price on the uh, sorry volume on the breakout is actually around about double some of the some of the prior days now a little subtlety here I may be covering it depending depending where I am on the video, but if you search trading view for Jack Corsellis RS line, you'll be able <coughs> to use a free RS line that I uh, that I, I've created or my team my team created. So what do you, what 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 it is you're going to see with I think pretty much all of these examples you're going to see these blue dots. What on earth are these blue dots? These are the relative strength line hitting 52 week highs. Why is that important? Because it's telling you at that moment in time, it is one of the strongest stocks within the market. And just on Qualcomm here, it's got 52, 52 week highs coming through whilst the stock is still within the base. That is telling you the stock is extremely, extremely strong. And commonly the best breakouts will coincide. And you'll see this with a lot of the examples that we go through will coincide with a blue dot, a 52 week high on the breakout bar or very very soon after so it's a common theme that you'll that you'll look for now Minavini when he when he was trading this back in 1999 and um, for other examples in his book I think we go to 2013-14 in the book he was not using my free RS line but you guys can use that but we can now we can now look back and you'll see a lot of these stocks have 52 week highs on the RS line prior to the base and after the breakout as well so just something to be uh, paying attention to this one here this is Cirrus Logic and this is kind of quintessential VCP. So you have three contractions in the base in kind of your classic VCP, as I said. Usually between three, between three and six, three and five contractions is 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 the norm. If you start getting kind of seven, eight, nine, ten, something's probably a little bit a little bit odd, odd there. But you can see here again, 52 week high before the stock even starts basing. And then you get this nice base here going from early in 2010 to kind of late, late-ish March, beginning, beginning of April. So a decent size base building there. And then you have 
have a one contraction, then it bounces, holds to 10, 21, and 50. So this is a tight contraction. So tightness in price with low volume with low volume is an indication there isn't much supply coming to the market. And then you get this third and final contraction, and there's actually a mini VCP in here as well. So you have one contraction, two contraction, three contraction, and then something <clears throat> to be looking for. And why and why do you get VCPs and VCPs? Is the fractal nature of the market? It is just supply and demand. It is the way it represents itself. Do you see in here as well? This is ideal to see these really tight candlesticks and or bars if you want to see it. So this is an indication. This is kind of if you think about if you think about the VCP here, one contraction, two contraction, three contraction. A really good visual example that you'll learn if you've done Minavini's course is is soaking soaking a towel in water, taking it out and wringing it. Okay, you're going to get a lot of water coming out. Think of that as supply. You spin it out. You wring it again there's going to be less water spin it out ring it again there's going to be less water so think of these contractions as the ringing of the towel then you are looking for evidence that there's very little supply coming to market so a couple of things to be looking for there is the depth of, of the contractions ideally you'd like to see on each subsequent contraction the depth is getting less but you can also then visually see it in terms of the price action and the volume as well so you'd like to see really tight price action just really tight inside bars volume drying up as well quite commonly you can get the lowest volume Volume bar or very close to the lowest volume bar in the base just before the actual the actual breakout so again it's context of where are you expecting certain things to happen within the base and then you can see see this bar here really nice breakout and what do you notice about the rs line 52 week high this is going to be a common theme you're going to see you see without throughout and then you can see volume is nearly three times two and a half times the 30 bar average let's go on to the next one so this one here is Melly. So this was a uh, this was this was a relatively recent IPO in two in two thousand and uh, two thousand and seven. So really good reaction on the IPO initially. Stockland kind of bases out here, gaps here, pushes up. So a nice strong rally beforehand. And then what do you see before the base even starts building out? See the fifty two week highs on the relative strength line. So yeah, focus your attention on ideally the strongest stocks in the market. You get a nice shake out demand tail, positive reaction to the earnings. So that's something you can be looking for. Reactions to the earnings stock powers to the higher the base, but there's overhead supply to contend with and then do you see how you start building out again within the kind of final contraction you get another little mini VCP and then do you see these really tight candlesticks coming through look how the volume dries up it looks to be pretty much either this volume bar here or this volume bar here but it's certainly either the lowest volume here within the base or the second to lowest volume within the base and then on the breakout day what do you notice that little blue dot is showing up again isn't it interesting so again focus on those relative strength stocks now this this setup here is probably my favorite setup from the book. I think it is a fantastic, fantastic setup. So this stock here powers up on huge volume. So when you see this huge volume, you can you can go a, a step a step further and you can look at the interrelatedness between price and volume. So when you look at this candlestick here, see how it gaps up and it opens on the low of the bar and then just pushes up and goes. What does this tell you in terms of the presence of demand? There's obviously huge demand here, but the demand, the buying was immediate. Why? Well, it's a gap up, opens on on the low of the day and then just pushes and has a very strong close and this is a widespread candlestick on a relative basis and then you can start to see the contractions so you basically have first contraction here little contraction here little contraction here and this is much more of a flag type pattern so the volatility contraction pattern is a characteristic that you will see within other patterns so that can be flags it can be triangles it could be wedges it could be also cup and handles which you are going to see you are going to see some of you'll also see it in darvis boxes um, as as well so boxes so darvis boxes flags cup and handles vcps pretty much the most common most common chart patterns that you are going to see when you're looking for these kind of setups and then do you see how the volume dries up see the tightness in price relationship of price in, in in terms of price and relationship to the moving averages is also important so as we're going through these examples just pay attention to where is the actual pivot which is the line of least resistance forming when you get really tight price action you've gone through those contractions the volume is drying up where is it happening and i call these trigger bars these really tight bars where are they happening in relation to the key moving averages as well so the deliberate practice the deliberate nature is that nature of things you're kind of using the moving averages as reference point for where are you expecting to see certain things good volume on the breakout and what do you notice 52 week high interesting right next one so this one here again is a vcp this is yelp back in 2013 so what are large operators doing around the earnings see this earnings gap up on volume gaps up opens near the low of the day pushes up good 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 reaction to the earnings there and then you can see the contractions so you have one contraction high low two contractions high low third and final contraction and something else to be looking for 
there are pretty much six, there are six candlesticks that I look for. I'm not gonna to go too depth in this video, but what I like to look for in terms of developing bases, so VCPs, flags, cup and handles, is shakeout demand tails and gap down reversal bars as well. So we've got a really good example here of actually two shakeout demand tails, one being here. So shakeout demand tail even better if it holds a key moving average. So shakeout demand tail holds the 50. Over here, shakeout demand tail, holds the 50, price then puts in an inside bar the following day, volume dries up, and what do you notice about this breakout here? You actually have a low pivot and then a high pivot. The high pivot breakout, that little uh, that little 52 week high is popping up again. Interesting, right? So next one here, this is Dick Sporting Goods. Similar to Melly, you can see positive reaction from the IPO. So this is a really impressive rally following an IPO for the first four or five weeks. And then the stock starts basing out. Shake out demand tail here, shake out demand tail here. And then see how in the pivot, so over here, you then get this larger kind of cup and handle, but within the pivot over here, so the handle, you actually get some VCP action. One contraction, two contraction, three contraction, shake out demand tail. Shake out demand tail, shake out demand tail, and then you see these multiple tight candlesticks. The volume dries up, good volume coming through on the breakout. Now, albeit there is not a 52 week high on the breakout, it happens very soon afterwards. See how you get these 52 week highs, and you get 52 week highs whilst the stock is still basing out. Look at all these 52 week highs here. So, those blue dots, strong RS line is a better indication that you are trading a leading stock in the, uh, in the market. And remember, relative strength is not my opinion, it is not your opinion, it is the opinion of the market. So, here's a stock that we all know and drive to survive has just come out season five so i'll be watching that on uh, on netflix over the uh, over the weekend this is now netflix on the weekly chart so Again, it's timeless. It doesn't it, it doesn't matter about time frames. You will see these same setups occurring on the one minute chart as you will on the one hour, the daily, the weekly, and also also the monthly. All time frames. Why? It is just supply and demand. It is an accumulation and distribution. It is buying and selling. So here you've got three contractions. You've got one contraction, bounces, higher low, bounces, and then goes and puts in this third and final contraction. Now I haven't measured the depth here, but visually, something that is good that is good to see is roughly when you start seeing these contractions, and most commonly you usually see three or four contractions is ideally the depth of the contraction first and foremost it's putting in a higher low but the depth of the contraction is roughly halving each time so if you imagine here these figures are not are not going to be are not going to be accurate but if you imagine the first contraction the depth from peak to trough is 30 percent then it rallies then the next one peak to trough is say 15 percent and then the next one is seven percent and ideally you'd like that final contraction as you'll read in the book to be in single figures because in a normal circumstance you could be placing your stop loss underneath the low the final contraction single figures then you're maintaining or looking to maintain a healthy risk versus reward relationship next one is microsoft on the weekly chart now this is a cup and handle type panel we're back in the 1990s so here you get this nice shake out demand tail that turns out to be the base low interesting and then over here in the handle this is the point that the vcp is not necessarily just that kind of nice three contraction depth is half in each time high lows coming through the vcp is volatility contraction so you're seeing volatility over here contract on the weekly chart the volume as well i'm very visual in terms of my learning do you see how the volume here this is a great example it stair steps down. See how this has stair steps down? See, it's just stair stepping down here as this pivot is forming and it's subtly building high lows. Really, really good to see. And then look at these 52 week cars on the weekly chart as well interesting next one here this is just a illustration this is southwest airlines ticket is l is luv for this 52 week highs before the stock starts basing out here and then you get we'll talk about but we'll talk about bases in a minute 52 week highs before base one and then look at these 52 week highs thereafter relative strength guys is so 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 important so invariably this is kind of an o'neill point as well for those of you who have read his book on, on how on how to make money in stocks do you see how you get one, two, three, four, five bases? When you start getting beyond, when you actually get to a fifth stage base, and certainly beyond the fifth stage base, they become very, very, very failure prone. Why? Well, because if you think about it from a price cycle perspective, you have the phase one accumulation, phase two uptrend, phase three distributional top, which is the institutions that have accumulated in the phase one base and then the phase two uptrend. They're then looking to sell to who? Invariably retail traders. And it could be these phase three tops is when the stock is being talked about on financial media, CNBC, whatever. Whatever it may be there's fantastic earnings reports coming out and then you could see you sit with crocs as well there's a really good example i think in how to make money and in the stocks it may be in minavini's first book actually um crocs really good earnings report comes out but the stock gaps down so the market reaction to said earnings report is very very important and here you can see a bearish synchronicity candlestick slicing through key moving averages so you want to look for 
bullish price action and then also be aware of bearish price action and the context of where are you seeing this VCP in relation to the price cycle? Are you early in a phase two uptrend? Are you getting late? Are you four, fifth, sixth stage base? Um, potentially sixth stage base is, is much is much more rare to be uh, to be fair, but it is worth counting, counting the bases, potentially it's a bit long in the tooth. Now this one here, this is Humana, and we're back in the 1970s. Just to illustrate, it's timeless. So you've got three contractions in this space. Three seems to be a bit of a magic number for these ones, isn't it? So one contraction, higher low, two contraction, and then higher low contracting over here, and you get a little bit of VCP action in here as well. See the shakeout demand tail holding the 200 SMA, and over here, shakeout demand tail holding the 200 SMA. Tightness in the pivot, volume dries up, breakout coming through on the volume, and it coincides even back in the 1970s. That blue dot on the RS line is showing up. Interesting, isn't it? Focus on the strongest stocks. This is Apple back in, I think this is 2000 and uh, I think it's 2004 potentially, or maybe a little bit later. This is a low, this is a low pivot. So with, with pivots and bases, you can get low pivots. You can get, there's more of a mid pivot. Actually, you can get low pivots, mid pivots or, or high or, or high pivots as, uh, as well. So what does that mean? It's basically, where are you seeing that? Where are you seeing the contraction in price, which is preferably single figures? Where are you seeing it in relation to the, to the base setting up? So see how this pivot here is setting up. Well, it's around about half the base, the higher the base is up here and this is setting up more so in the middle of middle of the base so for me this is a mid pivot breakout but you get this nice sideways contraction one contraction two contraction then just starts getting nice and tight in here so this is more kind of two contractions maybe kind of two and a half but do you then see how when this stock starts breaking out 52 week highs on the RS line, what do you notice before the base even begins? This rally here, 52 week highs on the RS line. Relative strength, really, really, really important. Whether it be Apple, whether it be in the 1970s, 60s, 40s, 2010, 2023, it doesn't matter. Relative strength, really important. This one here, this is Walmart, and we are back in the, I think this is 19, 1981 or something like that, around the 1980s. So it's more of a cup and handle type pattern um, for me, this one. But again, you get the volatility contraction point forming here. So see how you pull back down here and then just just a little side note, I know we're talking about VCPs in this space, in this space, in this video, I'm talking about bases a lot, aren't I? But just a side point here with cup and handles, for, for what I what I look for and what I invariably experience the better cup and handles to be is when you're building the cup and handle, when price starts coming out the right hand side of the cup, you'd like to see this is what I call bullish synchronicity. So you'd like to see, see I get these widespread candlesticks coming through, preferably on volume, even better. See how the stock is actually, even when the stock is pretty much down here on the lows of its base, it's hitting 52 cards this stock is screaming at you that it is so 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 strong and then you go and build the handle here 1021 ema bounce off it a couple of times volume dries up and then on the breakout 52 week high on the RS line, as you probably expected. eBay back in the early noughties. So eBay was a very big winner. I think in 2003, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, from my understanding is William O'Neill basically had his whole account and on margin in eBay for pretty much the entire year. That is what I've heard some of the uh, some of the can, some of the can, some guys who, who work with him say. And what do you notice about eBay? Well, it builds a nice big base with VCP action. So it starts putting in these high lows, huge base. So again, a causality point here, I'm a believer in the law of cause and effect. So the larger causes tend to lead to larger effects. What does that mean? Bigger the base, bigger the uptrend, to put it really simply. And you see 52 week highs, 52 week highs, 52 week highs, volume dries up, tightness in price, so on and so forth, right? Starting to starting to make sense, maybe. This one here is M, this is MU, this is Micron Technology. So cup and handle type pattern, which you can see here. So here's the cup. Here's then the handle, holds above the 50, volume dries up in the base. And this is the thing, the breakout, breakout, I should have written breakout instead of breakouts, the breakout squats. So not always on that first day when it's breaking above the pivot, is the stock going to go? Okay, and then this is where you'll hear Manavini talk about talk about squats, but the low of the pivot is not taken out. So this is where the stop loss placement would be underneath the low of this final contraction, which should be in single figures, as you now know, whether it be a contraction, whether it be the handle as well. <coughs> and then it takes a couple of days before it starts going. Now, albeit it's not hitting 52 week highs on the um, or 52 week high blue dots on the breakout, it is a healthy, nice RS line, and then the blue dots start coming there afterwards. But it is hitting 52 week highs prior to this base, which is an indication of it is a uh, it's a leading stock but you can invariably see the better the better breakouts actually do coincide with the 52 week high especially if they are mid or middle high pivots this is google 
from its IPO. So this is a lower pivot. So we've looked at high pivots. We've looked at mid pivots. This is a low pivot. <clears throat> now, why is it <coughs> why is it a low pivot? Because the pivot is building in the lows of the base, the lower third of the uh, of of the base. So I think about it: low pivot, lower third of the base, mid pivot around about halfway. High pivot is um, high pivot is obviously higher up in the base, right? So you get this nice tight inside bar volume dries up and has been drying up few 52 week highs from from its ipo and then the <coughs> 52 week highs actually start coming in when the stock is taking out the highs of the base so it's fairly it, it's fairly rare with a with a low pivot that you're actually going to have a 52 week high blue dot coming through unless the stock is extremely extremely strong much more common with higher base breakouts and to a lesser extent some mid mid pivots as uh, as well but if you get if you get a 52 week high and it's a it's a mid pivot or a low pivot breakout very 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 strong stock you're probably looking at uh, Zillow Group. This is a little bit more of kind of quintessential VCP. So you pull back in here, holds holds the 100 SMA a couple of times. So one contraction bounces. See how the depth of these contractions over here. Certainly the second and into the third contraction is pretty much halving each time. Really nice to see. Volume dries up. There's a nice little shake out to Martel on the day before. And just a little <coughs> little side note. Go kind of go go kind of tape reading on you. If you get these shake out to Martels and the volume is below the 30 bar average, it's an indication that there isn't much supply coming to the market okay because price is going down should be knocking out stop loss orders here so weak hands but it isn't because you're seeing it in the volume there just is not there is not much selling pressure there is not much supply coming coming to the market you're seeing it in the volume so shake out demand tails in developing pivots good 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 to uh, good to see few more lululemon so this is more kind of classic vcp isn't it one contraction two contraction three contraction this is a mid pivot for me see how this pivot here is building pretty much in the middle of the base volume dries up breakout coming um volume coming through on the breakout positive reaction to the earnings then the stock starts basing out really good to uh, really good to see a few more netflix this is on the daily chart this time and see how you get one contraction here, two contraction here, three contraction here. You could also look at that as maybe a mini fourth contraction. RS line, pretty good. This isn't my favorite of, um, of, of kind of VCPs. I still think it's somewhat, somewhat choppy over here compared to, compared to some of the other ones, but you can certainly see the higher lows, the depth, the depth of the declines. This is a good one for measuring the depth. So if you look peak to trough here, and again, let's just use this hypoth hypothetical 30% decline. If this decline from here to here is 13%, this decline from here to here is around about half maybe just over but let's imagine that's about 15 percent next decline is about half again maybe about seven percent and over here it may even be getting into three or three or four percent territory so again depth of the declines matter to create a more asymmetric recessive trade and then the final one here this is green planes at gpre is the ticker so a decent size base forming here and you start to get a cup and handle vcp action forming over here see how price basically goes sideways at the top of the base so if price is consolidating in a manner like this at the top of the base and it's basically going sideways forming a mini vcp and or darvis box and or flag and price isn't going down it's holding around the key moving averages volume dries up good 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 sign good sign to see indeed so that is it guys i hope i hope you have enjoyed that video i would highly encourage you to read the minivini books if you have not i think they are very very good they had a huge positive impact on my uh, on my own training so thank you very much for watching i'll see you in a future video